It's no secret that Little Nemo, the Dream Master, was one of our favorite rentals when my brother and I were kids. There was so much to like about the game, from unique gameplay to characters, and an innovative mechanic in taking the form of various creatures to accomplish different goals and reach new areas. But for me, one of the best aspects to this game were the engaging levels, created by none other than Capcom themselves in this nifty little NES title. There are eight levels, or dreams as they're called in this game, and I'm going to break down each level in order of my least to most favorite. Number eight, Nemo's House. My least favorite level in this game has to be the one that requires the most backtracking of all, Nemo's House. This is the fifth level in the game, and by this point, you're pretty familiar with how to find the creatures that will allow you to access new areas. However, in this particular dream, you are often climbing up to areas to find one creature that will allow you to climb to a higher platform where another creature is waiting that will allow you to fly down to break a wall in another area where a third creature is waiting. This kind of A to B to C to D kind of work in order to get around Nemo's house just becomes annoying after a while, and while I really do love this game, this particular level is not one of my favorites. Throw in enemies that continuously respawn and throw things like plates at Nemo, and this is just one of the most frustrating in the game. Number 7. House of Toys It really was a toss-up for me on which level would be at the very bottom, but I have to give the House of Toys dream a tiny bit of extra points because of its change to the gameplay style after completing only two other levels before it that are more platform focused. The House of Toys is an auto-scrolling level where Nemo rides on the top of a train, making his way through the Slumberland Palace, dodging dive-bombing planes, balloons that drop bombs, spikes, flying squirrels, and platforms that want to shove you off the side of the screen. To make this level worse, there are no checkpoints. Once you die, you go all the way back to the beginning, having to re-traverse the entire level once again. This one really comes down to a case of memorizing what happens when and how to dodge it, which in my opinion makes for poor gameplay that's just not as interesting as it could have been. I think it would have been a much better constructed level if the auto scroll sections only took place for limited amounts of time, taking you to some kind of checkpoint before starting another auto scroll section. There are keys to collect in this level, but Thankfully, there are some right at the beginning and enough right at the end to get you through the door as there is no backtracking without losing a life in this dream. Number 6. Nightmare World For the 8th and final level in this game, the mechanics switch up a little bit. Gone is the key collecting and now Nemo has use of the Morning Star, a scepter that can fire beams of light at enemies or be swung to whack enemies off the screen. This is particularly helpful as there are a lot of enemies to face here, and some challenging platforming sections that will test all of your skills up to this point. The entire dream is split into three sections, each with a boss at the end of it. The first boss is a king penguin, the second is a flying manta ray that shoots fire at Nemo, and the final boss is the final boss of the game, the Nightmare King. The level isn't bad, but it's not particularly great either. It's some pretty generic platforming, enemy bashing, and boss fighting that you might find in any other platformer of the time. Number 5. Topsy Turvy This is a strange level. It seems so short compared to some of the others, and also seems a lot easier than some that have come before it. Topsy Turvy is the seventh dream in the game, and the last level where Nemo has to collect keys in order to move on to the eighth dream. The look of the level isn't particularly inspired either, and comes across fairly generic with a few challenging platforming sections, but overall, the level just doesn't really leave much of an impression on the player. Sure, it's fun and gives you the opportunity to continue using the various creatures that you found throughout the game, but in the end, it only makes it to number 5 on this list. Number 4. Flower Garden By the time I had reached the Flower Garden when I was a kid, I remember being so in awe of the aesthetics, the puzzles, the new creatures to ride that you could find in this level. The second level introduces the hornet and the gorilla, providing some new ways to make it around that you didn't have in the first level before this. As a kid, I think I thought the first level was so hard to beat that making it to the flower garden felt like this whole new world had been opened up to me. 
In my opinion, this level gets it right when it comes to the puzzle aspects of this game. Sometimes in order to find keys to unlock the door at the end of the level, you have to figure out which creature you need to open up a new area that holds another key. In the flower garden, the creatures are all fairly nearby each other, allowing you to switch between them in order to try out various ways to make it around the course. I will say this level does introduce the most annoying enemy in the entire game in the falling seeds but otherwise i feel like this course brings what makes this game great together in one cohesive gameplay experience number three mushroom forest the very first level in the game is the mushroom forest filled with gigantic colorful mushrooms secrets and a whole new world to explore right at the beginning of the game this course starts off fairly simply, allowing you to figure out the controls, find some early keys right away. It introduces you to the mechanics of becoming the various creatures that will eat candy and allows you to find a few bonus areas with extra lives. There are some lightly challenging platforming sections, but an experienced gamer will be able to jump their way through pretty easily. The look of this level is great as well, and it really sets the tone for the whimsical feel of the rest of the game. Number two. Cloud Ruins. In the movie Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, my favorite animated sequence there is when Nemo flies through an abandoned city in the clouds. So when I came to the sixth level in the game and discovered it was the Cloud Ruins, I was super excited to play it. This level has a lot of moving parts, including two auto-scrolling sections that are not as difficult as the entire House of Toys level a section where Nemo hops across the rooftops in his hometown, and then the mysterious cloud ruins up in the sky. I think this level just telegraphed such mystery and is that perfect balance to the other courses in this game, providing some unique elements while also providing atmosphere. The keys in this level are really easy to collect as they're all waiting for you at the end of the level, but it's so much fun just to play through this one and enjoy the journey. Number one. Night Sea. There is something about the Night Sea level in this game that just seems to encapsulate everything that makes this game what it is. The fourth level takes Nemo under the sea to explore sunken ships and empty caverns all while avoiding sharks and fish. You also find the Hermit Crab in this level, which allows you to dig through the sand for keys and extra lives. The Flounder makes an appearance here as well, and allows for near-perfect maneuverability through the water, as well as plenty of hit points to keep Nemo safe. I think what makes this particular level so unique as well is that it's an ocean level, but an ocean level at night, which is not something that you really saw very often in NES games or even in games made more recently. It has such a great dreamlike quality that's just so much fun to revisit again and again and again. That's all the levels in Little Nemo the Dream Master, but I would be completely cheating you if I didn't share a little cheat built into the game that allows you to choose your course from the title screen. That way you can play your favorite levels without having to slog through the ones you don't love as much. On the title screen, press the buttons in this order, up, select, left, right, A, A, B. The phrase dream select will appear on the screen underneath the start option. All you have to do is move down to dream select and then press the A button for as many levels as you want to skip. And then you're in business. So if you're looking for a fun retro game to play, don't miss out on Little Nemo the Dream Master. This game, definitely not a nightmare.